Hey everybody, welcome back to my studio, welcome back to my channel. Well, I've said it before on this channel, I say it many times, many different places, I have some great customers. They're weird, but they're great customers. And a lot of these customers give me the ideas for these videos because they come in, they ask questions that they think are really stupid questions, and I go, that's an amazing question, I have to do a video about that. And had a conversation with somebody the other day who came in here, asked some questions because they wanted to buy a used camera. So we got talking about what to look for when buying a used camera. And a couple of things that came up, I'm putting into this video sort of together, but a little bit separately. And the first one was, the first part of the question came up, well, how many shutter actuations is too many shutter actuations? How many pictures can a camera really take and what, what should I look for? Well, let, let's address it from the camera manufacturer's point of view. When a camera is manufactured, they'll tell you that that shutter is good for half a million actuations. That shutter is good for 150,000 actuations, whatever it is. And yes, the uh, mirrorless cameras still have issues with wearing out parts. They are not perfect, so there are still issues with that. And people come in and say, I see this camera, it's for sale for 400 bucks, it has hardly been used, and it's, it's supposed to be really, should I get it? Number of shutter actuations is actually a real misnomer. It's like asking somebody how many kilometers is on their vehicle. And somebody says, well, my car's only got 2,000 kilometers on it. And somebody else says, well, I have the same make and model and year and everything, and my car has 100,000 kilometers on it. And you find out that the person that's been driving it for the 2,000 kilometers has been just driving it into the ground. They drive down the roadway with their foot on the gas and the brake at the same time. The, the brakes are just smoked. The, the thing's just in horrible shape. But yet the guy with the high mileage has been driving it on the highway, maintaining it and everything, and it's still in good shape. Or the guy with low mileage has had a major accident, the frame's bent and everything, and the guy with high mileage, his car's in perfect condition. I've seen people go and buy amazing cars that had high mileage on it and they lasted for a lot of years and there was no issues with it. Likewise with cameras. Just because a camera says it's only got 500 actuations on it or 1,000 or 2,000 or 5,000 or 10,000, whatever the number, it's not necessarily meaning that camera's in good shape. Perfect example. The other day, somebody posted a camera for sale online, locally. I was taking a look at it. It's a really good camera. It's a really phenomenal price, what they're asking for. The actuations are insanely low. We're talking a couple hundred for the couple of years that they've had this camera. I so happened to see the name of the person that was selling this camera and realize they don't do pictures, they do video. So I took a look really close at the camera and you could see the thing was just worn to pieces. So those 200, 250 actuations, whatever it was, they could have been hours of actuations, depending on how their camera was set up. There, there could be so many different things. I don't even know if the camera records the video time under actuations. I don't know any, anything about that. But these cameras, when you looked at them, for the 250 actuations, they had several that they were selling. And one was, I think, 225. The other one was around 250, somewhere around there. They were destroyed. They were absolutely destroyed. So people always ask me, and this is the question I get from my customers, how many actuations is too many? You could go out tomorrow and buy a low actuation used camera or even a new camera with zero actuations and have shutter problems with it. You, you really could. You could go out and buy a high actuation camera and have shutter problems. Another example, I'm recording this with a Canon 70D. Sitting beside me over here is another Canon 70D. Bought the exact same time. One of those 70Ds, the shutter's already gone on, and I had to send it in and get it repaired. It cost me 250 bucks, I think it was. The other camera with exactly the same number of actuations within a few thousand, it was still going great, and it's still going great today. That was like five years ago I sent that one in for the shutter repair, whether it's that one or that one, and it's still going great. So it's a real hit and miss thing. Don't let the shutter actuations be your guy. So what the heck should you look for? Look for wear, abnormal wear. Look for cracks. Look for stuff that just doesn't look right. I always tell people, 
take sample pictures if it's a camera. If it's a lens, you really can't tell. There's no wear stuff on a lens. It doesn't say this lens has been used for 14 and a half hours or this lens has focused 2 million times. It doesn't say that. But look for anything that looks out of the ordinary. Look for something that is a telltale sign. If it looks like the, the little chunk of glass is broken in the corner and it's, you just can't tell it on that edge if it's broken on I would walk away from it because chances are it was dropped. Chances are there's some problems. But again, try the camera. Try the lenses. Try everything. Even if it's a tripod, try the tripod. That sounds kind of cool. Make sure that the parts work. Make sure that everything's there. Make sure there's nothing that's weird about anything. If it has a pop-up flash in the camera, pop the flash up. Try it. Use it. Take the battery out. Take the cards out. Read the cards on the computer. Make sure that everything's there. Zoom in on the pictures. Make sure there's nothing funny on the pictures. Really, there's nothing when buying a camera that's going to tell you this is a great deal or this is a horrible deal. So what do I suggest? Well, buy used only when you have to buy used. If you can, when buying used, find somebody that you know or that a friend knows that's selling a camera. Chances are, this is just chances are, you'll get a better deal from somebody that you know or somebody that a friend of you knows, friend of yours knows, than you will buying from a complete stranger. If you're buying online on some of these sites and they have ratings, check their ratings. If somebody has a one out of five rating, run away from them. Just run away. Check other ads that the person has up. Do they have 30 cameras for sale? Some Canon, some Nikon, some Sony. Some, uh, be careful because they're either stolen or they're really hard on cameras or they're just a clearinghouse and they buy stuff cheap, clean it up and try to sell it. Be careful of that. If you have people or you know people in the photography community in your city or town, in your area, go to them and ask them if they know these people. It's really simple. A perfect example, and I'll pick on this gentleman. I used to work with this gentleman from the Lethbridge Herald. He goes through more cameras than I go through socks. Constantly changing cameras, and he sells them and buys a new camera. And constantly, his cameras are in amazing shape. If somebody was to come in today and say, hey, this guy has a camera for sale, I'd say, buy it. No ifs, no ands, no buts, buy it. Because it'll be in perfect shape. And if it wasn't in perfect shape when he went to put it up for sale, he would have sent it away, had it repaired so it was in perfect shape. And he would tell you everything wrong with it. He has very high ratings online. People buy his stuff sight on scene. He just has a good review and he's happy to answer your questions. Here's the sticky point about buying used. First of all, if you're buying used in person, try to do it somewhere secure. Around here, I tell people to come into my studio. Uh, if you have to go to a police station and do the exchange in the parking lot, don't send money by e-transfer till you have the product in your hands. If you can, check serial numbers for the, through the police before you buy it, especially if it's high, high-end equipment. I saw the other day a bunch of high-end video equipment for sale. The posts that the person had, they had multi-other posts there. I looked at the other posts and none of it said that this guy was into high, high-end video cameras. It just didn't look right. So if you can, get it, look at it, write down the serial numbers, tell the person you'll get back to them, call the police, have them run the serial numbers, go to a local camera shop, see if they know anything about it, and go from there. But don't send money ahead of time. Don't send it until you get this product in your hand. Don't send it or don't give any money until you've tested it and taken the images home. And don't be rushed when buying it. So that was just an add-on to the shutter count thing. But like I said, check the shutter count, but don't let that be your guide because that may be off. Check the camera as close as you can. Check the lens as close as you can and everything else. Take some test shots and then go from there. So good luck if you're buying a used camera. If you can, go with new. Then take it, get out there, take some amazing pictures with it. We'll talk to you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.